Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I know that I said we were going to take on the gym, the Eterna City Gym. But first, a little bit of a pivot here. We have this interesting house that I forgot to check out last time. So, we did go into the Orberg Mining Museum and we did learn they have the capabilities to revive fossils. So this area, this house, is all about digging. I ain't saying she a gold digger. But she ain't messing with no broke Pokemon trainer. Because right now, we have 35,000 Poke Dollars. So let's talk to this old man with his arms crossed, and he's wearing little flippy flops. Good for him. So... This is the introduction to this version of this game's Underground. So, this guy likes to go underground, I understand that. He started digging it out. There's actually stories I've heard of people that were very persistent at some point in their lives and they needed a pathway to get to something and there was no kind of government help or real big corporate way to do it. So they just kind of did it themselves, casually just going on a big old dig. Speaking of dig, I'm not trying to dig for compliments here or try to, you know, persuade anybody. But hey, if you're liking these videos, maybe throw a like my way. Add in some comments if you'd like to suggest some Pokemon or Pokemon names, things to do in the game. I'll be sure to give those a look. And subscribe if you haven't. Tell all your friends, your family. It's the holidays. Why not sit around the nice warm fireplace and watch some DMI plays with your family? Sprinkle a little holiday cheer in your life. But here we go, we have the Explore Kit to go into the underground. So he's gonna walk us outside because we couldn't have done that on our own. So we'll use our Explore Kit to do just that. So you can basically use the Underground Kit, or the Explore Kit, sorry. Basically you can use that anywhere. Except for, like he said, indoors or in caves. And what do you know? It's Roark. Surprising. He likes to probably hang out here and neglect his gym leader duties. Hanging out in the mine in the underground. Dude, it's got an affinity for, for rocks. So this is a very interesting kind of way that they have incorporated this into this game. This specific version of the underground has all kinds of opportunities where you can dig, which we will be doing for a moment. You can make a secret base, which is kind of neat. They introduced that in Ruby and Sapphire, but that was in trees. In this game, I suppose it's underground. And if you want to go back to the service, you just hit the YYY. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and demonstrate digging. So if you can see the mini map in the upper left hand corner, there are certain little blips on the screen, these yellow diamonds. But if you approach the wall, that if you approach, excuse me, where is it? Usually it's not this tricky to do, but we'll find it. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Usually this is supposed to work a certain way, but it is, of course, not as I'm trying to demonstrate. What else is new? All right, we'll, we'll try another one because that one's being a butt. But yes, there's little bulges in the wall that you can't really see. It's not really kind of acknowledged, but you just have to feel around for it. Here's an example. So yes, we love... Nice bulge, and we will check in to see what's here. We're going to dig for some fossils. So here you go. You have two options for digging. You have a hammer, you got a sledgehammer. The hammer is the weaker of the two, kind of used to clear out little areas, while the sledgehammer will really knock some stuff around. So you can switch between the two with R, obviously, and they will do varying degrees of clearance. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate here with the sledgehammer. Bam. So that usually clears out in a plus pattern, but you have to be careful because if you look at the upper right hand side of the wall, there's a crack now. There's a big crack. And that basically is your endurance meter of the wall itself. So we were told in advance that 
This wall, in particular, has four items buried inside of it. So once you do clear out a little bit of space, you can start to chip away. This is almost kind of like playing a Minesweeper. So, you can move around. I mean, you can, you can do this however you'd like to. Uh, the sledgehammer obviously is more direct in that when you clear out the space, it will certainly make more of an impact, literally. And you have to clear out these kind of top level rocks if you want to have any hope of finding anything cool. So we have uncovered one thing. This exploration is, it can be kind of tedious at times, but it is really fun when you are digging in the underground and you find a neat treasure. So if that's something you can manage, you will feel wonderful upon doing so. There are four treasures in this specific randomly generated field of space. And I'm doing a great job at not finding any of them, just the one so far. Usually, when you dig through, you'll find yourself slowly uncovering them. And as you do, the wall will crumble around you. So you just gotta be mindful of how many shots you got left. And to hopefully find what you're looking for. Now, as we were warned, there is the danger of finding these little metal plates. Maybe they're metal, maybe they're rock, I'm not sure. Finding those in the underground. If you do find those, and you do click on them, those are actually going to impede your progress. So, you don't want to find those and try to keep hammering away. And there's uncovering the third thing. So this was not very, very successful for us, but we did find a prism sphere and a green sphere. Now, I don't have these numbers off the top of my head, but you can typically trade those in for goodies down the road, and you need quite a bit. So, and that's not an understatement. Like, to really get the good stuff like TMs and higher level items, you need, like, we're talking hundreds. So, keep that in mind. Let's see if we can dig one more wall while we're here, just to demonstrate. See if we can be a little more successful. This wall also sucks, that's great. It's one of the, the downsides is that if you find a wall that has a lot of rocks in it, that can be really frustrating. You'll wind up having to clear those out before you can really make any sort of progress. But in doing so, you'll just have to kind of plug and play along the way. What do you say at the end of the day? So it can be a bit of an arduous process. And they did add some items into this game that I don't know if I would say it makes this process better. I guess having like more things to look for isn't always a bad thing, but I think that the things they did add from what I've seen aren't really great. I'm not, you know, I'm not really blown away by the things that they've added. Now, they made secret bases kind of a bigger deal. They weren't really in the original version of this game. And they put them back. And by doing so, they had to give you a way to make your secret base a little more homely. And that's fine, but, you know, I'm down here. If I'm, you know, spending my life toiling away in the coal mines, because I'm digging for fossils. I'm not trying to get any statues or figurines. Oh. So we might have found something. Are we gonna have enough time to get it? Ooh, that's a heart scale, I think. It's actually a really good prize. There will be moments here where I probably will come back and dilly-dally in the underground, but that will be on my own time. This is actually the only way to find fossils in this game, so finding a heart scale really is really nice. So that's very cool. And just to give you an idea of what the rest of this area is like, there are these question mark rooms those of you that have played Pokemon Let's Go, not Go, Pokemon Let's Go, in the overworld of that game, there were no encounters that happened aside from the ones with Pokemon being visible. So there are sprites here walking around that will chase after you if you're not careful, and you can see exactly what you're gonna get, which I think is interesting. 
So you can already see here, there's a plethora of Pokemon. There's actually the evolution. Samuel right there, but we're not gonna short side him. Actually, don't really have anything in particular that I'd like to get, but this is actually kind of a nice early way for you to find pretty high level stuff. And that's not a joke. You can actually, and I think the levels scale. No, I could be wrong. So feel free to give me a what's what. But I do believe that the the Pokemon levels will scale with your team, which is really nice. So you're not going to find stuff that's going to rock your world. If you've played Sword and Shield, there would be moments when you would be in the various little areas and some of the Pokemon you'd encounter. Oh, there's a Murkrow. The, uh, actually, you know what? I actually like, I think I like the evolution of Murkrow, which there is one. Spoilers, we're going to go ahead and fight one. Add a Murkrow to our team. I think Murkrow's pretty fun. Murkrow is a Gen 2 Pokemon. However, Murkrow evolves into a Gen 4 Pokemon. It was added an evolution in this game. So, maybe we'll throw Murkrow on the team. Murkrow should be pretty... Okay, that's kind of like that use the a different form of swagger swagger is a move that confuses your Pokemon But it increases your attack by a bit this one increased our special attack. So I think it's kind of nice. They call it flatter So that's kind of funny It doesn't look like this Murkrow might have any Flying moves, which is not great Because if I want to use it against The Eterna City gym Which is all grass types. I would like to have some oh, Okay, never mind. Nose wing attack. Okay, that's horrible. Oh, sorry, Bart. I was trying to paralyze Murkrow, but we uh, weren't very successful. But yeah, so this is kind of a nice little area where you can find some Pokemon that maybe in general you wouldn't. And I think that it's kind of neat to open this up early where you're not quite as constricted by trying to find things in the wild. I mean, I guess this is technically quote unquote the wild, but it's the underground wild. Which I think is interesting. Hopefully we don't kill this Murkrow. We do not. Dark moves are not very strong against dark Pokemon. Who would have thunk? It's okay. Oh, it knows Ghost. Go ghost. It knows Gust and Wing Attack. It's actually really good. So that gives us options. We'll need to do more than this, though. This is not very effective. This is a battle of attrition, ladies and gentlemen. It would be nice to have some sort of a... Paralysis, sleep, poison inducing move to help ourselves out. I don't believe that Murkrow is that difficult to catch. So that shouldn't be a really a huge issue. One more should do it. And there's actually one more additional Pokemon in this area that if I can find it, I will catch it. So hopefully this, okay, great. Oh, we critical. Don't you love when that happens? Don't you love when you critical when you don't need it? Uh, that's unfortunately us gaining experience from killing a wild Pokemon. That's happened twice now. That is not the goal. One and done is not the goal. Let's go ahead and pop out of this room and pop back in and see if we can maybe find another Murkrow. I actually would really like to have one now that I'm thinking about it. There it is, right away. Okay, so we're doing fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. I love Murkrow's sprite. Kind of looks like it's wearing a witch's hat, which I think is fun. So we have bird on bird battle. The battle of non-existent entities. Government drone versus government drone. So let's see if Sharon can do a little bit quicker of a of a knockdown here. In the meantime, that Steven approach was a little bit on the slow side and you just gotta go fast. But yes, I'm thinking that I might actually use Murkrow in the meantime as a replacement for Sharon. No offense, Sharon, you're doing great. But I think having a little bit of diversity in my team is fun. Nothing wrong with normal and flying types, but I think that there's just kind of something special about using Pokemon that have a little bit more variety. So a dark flying type, Murkrow is ours. We do get experience for catching it. Not that I need it, but you know, very cute little sprite. It's kind of got like a witch's broom as a tail and a witch's hat as its hat, nice. So Murkrow, the darkness Pokemon, it is believed that seeing this Pokemon at night will bring about ominous occurrences. We will. We are going to name Murkrow Miguel. Miguel the Murkrow will replace Sharon for the time being. Should be pretty instrumental in 
attacking the next gem. Now, what I really do appreciate, we'll take Sharon's Quick Claw. What I do really appreciate is the ability to swap Pokemon in and out from this screen. That is fantastic. The fact that you can go and check out your box from here is amazing. So let's go ahead and see Miguel's stats and kind of what we're working with here. I don't remember Miguel being, you know, specifically driven towards any specific stat. I don't know Murkrow in advance, but, you know, its defense is going to be a little better. Its special attack's a little worse, but, you know, I feel like a lot of the dark moves, there should be enough physical dark moves to make things happen. So that's neat. Let's wander around here a little more. And what I love about this area is that because the Pokemon are wandering around, you can see their sprite. Ooh, got attacked by a Magnemite. Because the because the sprites are walking around, there are no random encounters except for these ones, and I love that because random encounters are a pain in my buns, and I don't like it. So I'm gonna wander around just for a couple more moments here because I need to get crack a lacking on the gym. So we might just walk away with Miguel, which is fine. Nope, stay away from me. Excuse you. Excuse you. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do for now, and we'll come back. I actually do intend to continue to change the team up a wee bit. So your first trip out of the underground, when you resurface, you get some spheres on top of having the opportunity to catch some odd Pokemon that maybe you wouldn't normally find. So that's fun. It's a nice way of breaking the game up. I know that one of the things that I thought was a bit of a butt is in previous versions of Diamond and Pearl, you were really limited with the Pokemon selection, which is really unfortunate. And, you know, there's not really anything you can do. So we're going to go ahead and look at BB. Hey, BB. Um, look at their PC and we'll move. We'll move Bart out of the team because Bart is really going to be essentially useless, unfortunately. not. And not as a not as a Pokemon in general. Bart's actually going to be very useful in the future. But in this upcoming gym, relatively pointless to have a grass Pokemon. So now with the time that we have left, we're going to go ahead and take on this gym. But first, this guy. Mr. Hype Man. So this is Gardenia. She's the grass gym leader. She's actually right there. So this gym is actually the shortest one in the game. It's kind of strange that they would have just had one little room, but you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and talk to Gardenia. Oh, oh, there are trainers. Okay, well, I don't see any. Guess they're in the back room. Slacking off as per usual. Get back to work. The boss is not gonna have those extra, extra vacations without you. Trickle up. Okay. So I don't remember how this gym works. I know that in Platinum, they had a really nice kind of way of approaching this gym where it was a giant clock that had pedals and the pedals on the clock would move based on the trainer that you'd fought. And they would move all around. This is actually kind of strange and a little cumbersome. Um, my, I don't know. Oh, there we go. I yeah, completely walked past this person. Let's go ahead and swap out for Miguel. Miguel actually is probably going to be our breadwinner here. And take on our first trainer. How did you know where to find me? I do believe that the trainers in this gym, I don't know if they pop up after you fight some. Ooh, that's a nice, that's a nice nasty lens flare there. So if you haven't seen some of the early grass Pokemon, you will from this battle. So hopefully Miguel can lead us to victory. But yeah. Oh, it knows Brave Bird. That's awesome. That's one of the things that's also interesting, too, is that a lot of the Pokemon that you'll find in the underground, on top of the fact that they are kind of unique for the area, from what I've seen, the, the moves that they get are a little different. And I don't know if that's, like, intentional, but, you know, I, I've noticed that there seems to be a little bit more variety and the moves that they get. And you can find some really, really cool stuff. So Brave Bird's a nice move, but it does 
cause recoil, which is unfortunate. And I don't really know why I put Bonnie on the team. I don't really probably intend to use Bonnie as a team member, but who knows? If I do, I don't want to have an underpowered Bonnie. All right, so that's kind of a very creepy, like, assaulty thing to say. She wants to beat us while we're in a state of shock? That sounds like something a criminal would say. You creep. Okay. So yeah, the trainers are hidden around these trees a little bit, and they do give you hints on where to go, what to do. I'm gonna try to mix this up a little bit if I can. Unfortunately, it's a little tough because it's exclusively grass-type Pokemon. And I don't want to cheese it and just bring in Charlie and have Charlie, you know, Ember, everything that's boring. So there isn't really a ton of uniqueness that you can apply to these early gems. There's not really a ton of strategy besides having opposing trainers have their Badoo shoot goo on us, which, you know, I don't, you know, I don't like that. Very annoying. But, you know, Miguel's no worse for wear, really being a flying type easy peasy I don't want to you know I'm not trying to just solo this gym with Miguel I probably could but you know let's go ahead and switch into let's switch into Steven we'll get Dimitri some airtime too not not that Dimitri needs it Dimitri is actually a higher level than the rest of my Pokemon but I'm very thankful that I was able to catch Dimitri the Drifloon my first try because I know having looked it up that catching a Drifloon with just Pokeballs, you got a 15% chance, which is not, not great. Not great. But I do think it's interesting. There's lots of uh, what appears to be some coniferous trees, pine trees, maybe some spruce and birch. So I don't know if birch is that type of tree. Probably not, but hey, if it is, great. If it's not, then I'm just a big old dumb. I do know that spruce, fir, and pine are all those types of trees. Some of which are better than others for bringing inside. After you murder it in a field and then you drag it home on your car. And then you throw ornaments on it because nature. Although I do remember hearing a story about the origin of the Christmas tree. Where it's a pagan ritual where the reason why the tree was brought inside was to essentially save it from the harsh winter climate and then to replant it in the springtime. So, I don't know how valid that is or if I'm even recounting it correctly, but I do remember reading that in a moment. So, take that for what it's worth. Let's see if there's any trains over here. So they're in the middle, that doesn't really help me. This middle, do I see feet? I do. You can't conceal the aroma of flowers. I like that literally every trainer we fight in here looks identical. You're going to want to fight every trainer because the Sinnoh Dex completion depends on it. The Sinnoh Dex is 150 Pokemon that you will be able to accomplish if you fight every single trainer in this game. And upon doing so, you have a very cool, unique reward that's actually in the Eternal Forest. Now, I won't say what that is because we're going to come back to it later, but it is interesting. And I think that it's one of those things that it, it that requirement wasn't in Platinum. It was not in Pokemon Platinum, but it is in this one. And oh boy. Whew, hang in there, Miguel. He's not doing so, so sharp here. That's okay. Turtwig is very tanky for a grass type. If you pick Turtwig, you're probably doing pretty okay in your game. Especially since Turtwig starting out, your first gym was against Roark, and that's all she has. So I believe there is one more Pokemon trainer? Beside four flowers. Okay. So, let's see if maybe there are four flowers back here. It looks like there is. Ooh, this lady's blonde. And this gym kind of reminds me of the uh, Celadon gym. Red and blue. Beauty Lindsay. 
Linzai! With her hoop belt and her hoop purse and her hoop bracelet, her bangle, perhaps. But yeah, it makes me think of the of the Celadon gym, where that was only women, and then there is a... This was changed in future iterations. I believe Let's Go changed this, but it might have been in like Fire and Leaf Green. But there is a, there's supposed to be an old man that's outside that gym just kind of being perverted, looking in and creeping on all the ladies. So we nay nay that, we say no. Say, sir, you need a better hobby. So there we go. Hope this battle won't take too long. I don't want this episode to drag on a ton. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, who do we want? Let's go. First off, we're going to heal because Miguel is things are getting a little dicey. Maybe one more. We got a couple of potions to spare. And let's uh, let's let's make this harder for ourselves and we'll swap out to Bonnie first and essentially give Gardini a free turn. So that's fun, right? Um, not entirely sure where the camera was going, but that is what it is. Oh, we kept her waiting. She told us to fight everybody. Okay, so she sees our aura. It's very nice. She's gonna get our aura all over her face. I know that. Here we go, gym battle number two. I just love the gym theme in this game. It is fantastic. She also has a nice smock. Perhaps she partakes in the devil's lettuce. She's also wearing cargo shorts, so she's all about utility. Good for her. I don't really think Bonnie has anything worth doing. Yeah, I don't even know what those moves do. I only know pound and defense crawl. I haven't heard of literally any of those other moves. So instead, let's go ahead and get Dimitri out here. Dimitri doesn't really need the experience, but I think it'd be interesting to see what he's capable of. And Cherubi starting off with a very important move, Safeguard, does nothing. Basically prevents it from having to deal with any sort of debuff things like sleep or paralysis, poison, but it's kind of tough to actually do with a, uh, oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh, maybe not. One of the things that I really like about Dimitri is that he's very tanky. And that's not gonna change. I believe that it's evolution, which we'll see later, has one of the higher HP stats for a ghost type, which I think is really nice. I don't know what Hex does, so let's check this out. Relentless attack does massive damage to a target affected. Okay, so that's actually, that would be nice if we had the ability to affect it with status. We don't have, we don't have anything like that. But Truby does know Dazzling Gleam, which is actually a cool, I believe a rock type move. And that move in particular is, could you stop? That move in particular I think is really nice and it's actually on a Pokemon that I hope to find that is gathered from slathering that bark with honey. Just to give you a hint, just to get your mind buzzing about it. Okay, so for whatever reason this Cherubi was a pain in the buns. I don't know, I don't think it's Cherubi, but I do think that it's the evolution of Cherubi that has a very cute sprite that changes based on the time of day. So I think that's really nice. It's kind of like a nice, open, happy, hanging out sprite during the day. And then at nighttime, it kind of closes up like some plants do. Some plants will, you know, biologically move towards wherever the sun is to get themselves the most sunlight. So I think that's pretty cool. We're going to try to Spread this around. It's actually a smart move by that Turtwig using the Reflect, because Reflect doesn't just impact Turtwig itself, it impacts the whole team. And Turtwig already is pretty tanky. But not tanky enough? That's two Turtwigs in one gym. I wonder if Professor Rowan is hooking them up. He just got some spare Turtwigs hanging around. But we've already gotten two levels from Miguel in this gym. And Roserade, the ace Pokemon. So let's go ahead and go ace to ace. Just like Requiem for a Dream. Okay. So Charlie it is. Take out their big guns with our big guns. It is not the end yet. Also, her mouth did not move enough times to remotely say that. 
So here is Roserade. This is the evolution of Rosalia, which is a fantastic Pokemon. Roserade is great. Part of the reason why I want him to do on my team is so that way I could eventually have a Roserade. Now, evolving Rosalia, though, is a little tricky. It's not quite as simple as you'd expect to. It's not a level up evolution. It does have specific requirements. Actually, a stone evolution that is new to this game. So we'll, we'll worry about that later. And here she is using the unique move for this gym, Grass Knot, which isn't very effective against Charlie, obviously. And I forgot that we have Flame Wheel now. Okay, so it, this Rosary is not afraid to shoot its goo on us. I love its design, though. Its, its, it's arms or, you know, appendages, whatever you want to call those, are like little um, bouquets. So I think that's really nice. And I don't think Flame Wheel... Okay, so Flame Wheel is physical. Now that that Reflect is worn off, Unless we get paralyzed here, we should be okay. Grass Knot, I believe, is a, is a psychic. No, it's not. It is not a psychic move. It's a grass type move that I believe is affected based on the weight of your Pokemon. So the heavier your Pokemon is, the more damage that that move will do. So this might be enough to finish it off here with the Reflect Gun, and it is Gym 2 in the books. And everybody gets a ton of experience. Some level ups for the team. Charlie, Samuel, Bonnie. All hitting that peak. Samuel wants to learn Ancient Power. Uh, yeah, Ancient Power is an awesome move. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of Harden. Once again, I'm not trying to get rid of the buff debuff moves like I used to, but, you know, Harden is kind of not really great. So I'm not trying to set up like I needed to. And Bonnie wants to learn Quick Attack. Yeah, Bonnie, you will learn Quick Attack. How about that instead of Pound? Quick Attack's like a faster Pound. Because I like to pound it fast. It's just how I do it. So some level up, some new moves. The second gym, done. Gardenia, her salad has been tossed, done. We are really tough. Just like Bowl of Kale. Tough to get through, not my favorite. But our success nets us our second gym badge, the forest badge. It's a really nice design. All the gym badges in this one are really nice compared to the ones in like X and Y, horrible. And now we can use cut. Increased trading obey obeying Pokemon. Some stickers for our balls. Thanks Gardenia and Grass Knot. So we get three of those, I believe. Yes, I was correct. So the heavier the Pokemon, the better you'll do. And once again, to assert dominance over the gym lead, we will stand next to them and show our superiority. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you had a good time. I know I did. It's been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike, and I will see you all next time. Bye.